student of Dr. K's in undergraduate and graduate school. So if I screw anything up, it's his fault. Yeah, if I get anything right, I didn't learn it from him. <laughs> and the, the things I learned from Jordan, I don't think we can discuss here, so we're not going to go into that. But anyways, a lot of what Dr. K talked about over there and what you guys look about, and when we talk about fragile pans, we need to back up a little bit and think about what the most limiting factor is on growing crops. And what's that? Water. Water, water. that's exactly right. And what our soils are, are our reservoirs for holding the water for available water capacity. So, in our fragile pan soils, and if we look here, I don't think there's any disagreement that there's a fragile pan layer, a dense layer right in here because of the great streaks and the prisms that Dr. Kay's talked about. But again, our reservoirs. Our reservoirs for water is this right here. And we got about 23 inches as a reservoir for your water. Let's say that this fragile pan was not here. How much of a reservoir would you have for water? The limit of your soil. So that's why it's so important for us to do something about this fragile pan. Again, years with good moisture, you don't seem to be quite as problematic because the moisture is held right here. Drought years like 2010, 2012, you don't have any water to get to there to back up, so you're looking at 50, 60, and 30 acre bushels of yield. So what we're trying to do is increase the volume of our soils so that we can increase our available water capacity. That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, again, uh, if you take a little bit closer look at this, you see that the brown areas and the gray areas, again, those gray areas are those streaks or those tongues. You know how Dr. K showed the bottom of that dry pond bed and those desiccation cracks? Those desiccation cracks were filled with the silty material from the lust after the receding glaciers. This silty material came into these polygons, and you see that that material is just almost all silt as compared to the other ones, which is you know a little bit higher in your sand and, and, and clay. All right, your fragile pan generally starts gray area, and you'll see an area right above your fragile pan where you start to get some discoloration. And what's happening is that water moves through and it hits the fragile pan and it starts to back up. So it stands up on top of that fragile pan. So the fragile pan actually doesn't start where your discoloration starts. That is where our fragile pans are actually degrading. As that water, you know, as Dr. Kay said about putting those uh, prisms in a beaker and over time they would flake or slough apart. That's what happens. The water sits on top of the pan and it is degrading itself. So fragile pans are naturally degrading their cells. What the deal is, this fragile pan here is about four or five feet thick. It's going to take a long time to degrade that pan to get any yield production off of that. So a lot of times, you know, the fragile pan doesn't always start where your discoloration starts. Uh, I don't know if he said it uh, about it too much last time or organic matter. Our fragile pans are very low in organic matter. Of course, as you can all see, our topsoil here, our topsoil is quite a bit darker. It's because the organic matter, you know, you're talking two, two and a half percent right here as compared to a half a percent or less in your fragile pan. And that's simply because you don't have any roots or any root penetration. The roots cannot penetrate into that volume of the fragile pan. So, when you guys get down here to look, I want you to look right here. You can see what we have right here is a root. And where's that root going? Down the crack. It's going right down that prism. So you've heard that fragile pans do not have roots in them. Actually, not completely true because it is going down that street or that prism, but it's not going to this interior right here, which is the interior of the prism. Very little, you know, your water does move through there, but it flushes on out. So again, the roots that are growing, you see they're trying to go pretty deep because they are chasing the water. Okay? I was here about a, yeah. <laughs> I was here about a, a couple of months ago and the water was right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you know, it kind of depends on where our fragile pans are too. You know, Dr. K talked about if you have that fragile pan at 10 inches. So you're saying why would this fragile pan be at 10 inches? It's a function of erosion. If you look around, it's pretty flat right here. Mm -hmm. Let's jump this up to about 8, 10, 12% slope. Erosion. 
takes this off and your fragile pans right here. You remember I said our soil is our reservoirs for water. What would your reservoir be? Yeah, much you know, smaller. What kind of yield are you looking at there? Much lower. It's not much. That's when you're talking about some marginal ground that you possibly want to think about taking out of production and uh, getting in Uncle Sam's pocket a little bit right there. Uh, any more questions? What's the pH change between the silt streaks and the actual core of the fragile pan? Uh, they're generally low in pH. Now the silt streaks themselves, I would say, they're a little bit higher because of the lust material. And there's nothing, you know, holding it's flushing through. So I'd say the silt streaks are probably the silt streaks are more acidic. Yeah. Versus the interior. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just wanted to point out that this this type of soil, which I have a bunch of, is the worst of both worlds because uh, <laughs> it is the most erodible because the water can't, pen I have the red soils that the water can go down and those Kreider soils, I have less problem with erosion. Whereas these Fragipan soils, because the water can't go down, it's gonna go over the top and it's gonna effectively reduce the, the size of that layer. And it's been reduced over time probably already, but it's gonna reduce the size of that layer. So in time, like Jordan was talking about, your, the value of your land is actually going down because you're losing the very thing you want is the water storage capacity. So cover crops have a have a benefit, and of course ryegrass has the extra benefit of fixing the problem, but all cover crops have the benefit of stopping or slowing the erosion problem. Well, and, and obviously there are massive benefits to cover crops, and one yeah. of them is this organic matter. Right, 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 right. No, but I, I'm just saying that in this soil particularly, Erosion is, when you get a little slope, for each degree of slope, the erosion is the worst in the fragile pan soils, and they're the, they're the soil we need to, to address. Because the water doesn't percolate. Yeah, because the water the doesn't percolate. That is absolutely, and it also hurts in a wet year. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Water's yeah. standing right here, what's happening to your roots that are standing in that water? They're all dying off. They're gone. Yeah. So again, it's not only about the water, it's when you get the water. Mm -hmm. And in particular on these shoulder slopes where you have a higher chance of erosion because you got so much water flowing off mm, yeah. here and it's really saturated right there, you even have a higher chance of erosion. That's why you get all those severely eroded That's phases true. along those shoulders. That's absolutely correct. Any more? So if I follow Tossus's model of formation, right, the prisms are a precursor to all of the streaks, the streaking material. Mm -hmm. right? Correct. Because you had an old erosional surface. Yeah. Lust dumped on top of it, and it grew on top of that old erosional surface. Yeah, so what would be the source material for the prisms? The it, source of the prisms? Like, what would be the material for that? The aluminum and the silica out of the lust. Well, right, but like, the material that actually makes up the prism, because it so would have to be there first. Where'd the lake bed come from that deposited so yeah, the, the, the yeah, fragile pan? It's an old paleo soil that came from sandstone, siltstone, okay. stone. So it's residual mm -hmm. material. That's why you would hear them. Excuse me? It could have been an yeah, older layer of lust also. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's an old paleo soil before the, the glacier. Yeah. So. As far as I know, it's always 